Hey, I'm Falygon, and in this video I'm going to show you how to sculpt stylized heads. When I say that this is going to be easy, I mean it. I'm breaking this down into simple to follow sections that you can quickly return to in the future using the section markers in the video. I'll be using ZBrush, but you can feel free to follow along in Blender or any other sculpting software. Now if I've timed this correctly, it should be coming out around Christmas, so hopefully it'll be something nice for you to follow along with going into the new year. That's always a great time to pick up some new hobbies or get back into something that you once loved. One quick note that I always like to do in all of my tutorials before I start, you will notice that I do have a custom user interface here in ZBrush. I have custom pop-up menus, I have custom brushes, hotkeys, all sorts of fun stuff. Anytime I use any of that, I will happily let you know where you can find it in the default ZBrush user interface. And I'll try to keep things as software agnostic as possible to make sure that you can follow along in things like Blender or anything else that you like to use. We're going to be creating this character here, and I'm going to be placing them in the top left hand corner of my screen pressing shift s on my keyboard if you want to get rid of that it's control n or you can go up into the layer menu and of course click on clear if you accidentally drop things to your canvas it can be a bit of a hassle so that's how you get rid of those but let's go ahead and get started now with the basic shapes of this character so i'm clicking up here finding a sphere 3d and then clicking on make poly mesh 3d I'll go ahead and even refresh this section just to keep things nice and clean. Okay, we have our sphere selected and we're ready to sculpt on that as a quick test. Just making sure things are working for us. I'll hit X on my keyboard to activate symmetry. And let's go ahead and grab a material and color for us to get started. Now I'm using the Zebro paint material and you can change your material over here. I'm going to recommend for you though, if you don't have that, to go ahead and use the Skin Shade 4 material. It's pretty much exactly the same with some very minor differences overall. Now I'll be finding a really basic skin tone here for my character somewhere in the orange spectrum up in that top left corner. Anything will do just fine because we can always adjust it later. Now we do wanna go ahead and apply that color and material real quick because if we change our color currently to say black, red, whatever, it will update uh, because nothing is currently applied. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll switch back to this, that's V on your keyboard to quickly swap back and forth between your colors. And with any old brush, it doesn't matter which one, let's just make sure we have MRGB selected up here, crank that all the way up to 100 and click on fill object over here on the left. Once that's finished, if you go ahead and swap your color, you'll see now that it no longer updates. So that's kind of what we're looking for there. Okay, let's start with the basic shapes, and for that, I'm going to come over here to the right side menu and click on Duplicate. I'll be sliding this down with the Transpose tool. You can also do this with the 3D Gizmo, which is located up here. You can toggle back and forth between the two. Feel free to use whichever one you are most comfortable with. After that, I'm going to select the Move Brush. To find all of your brushes, you can click up here, or you can hit the B hotkey on your keyboard. And if you have a lot of brushes like me, it can be a little overwhelming, so you can use the characters up here to narrow in on things like, for instance, the move brush. And all we're going to do now is start moving and adjusting this shape, making sure, of course, that you do have symmetry on. Again, that's X on your keyboard. And we're just going to create a really basic lower jaw. So this top piece here will be the skull, and this lower piece is going to be our jaw. Now if you want to change your brush on the fly like I'm doing, I'm pressing the space bar, but I believe you can also press S on your keyboard, and if you need to, you can always come up here to the top of your screen and adjust it that way. So lots of different ways to go about the process of changing your brush size. Additionally, if things are getting a little warbly and messy, you can always hold down shift and smooth out your shape with your smooth brush. All right, so what we're looking for is something pretty similar to what I have going on here at this time. We will adjust this further in just a moment, but I think that's good enough for now, so let's go ahead and get a neck appended onto this shape here. For that, we're going to come over here to our right side menu one more time and get rid of that accidentally duplicated piece. Instead, we're gonna click on Append, and we're gonna find a Cylinder 3D. Let's grab that cylinder. I'll just click on it over here. If you wanna hot swap between subtools, you can always alt click on them directly on your screen, but we'll be saving that for later. Let's move to the side. Of course, symmetry is always on X key for our keyboard. And let's scale this neck down into place. So a simple cylinder. Again, feel free to use the 3D gizmo if you're more comfortable using that tool. 
it will not matter whatsoever. Both tools will get the job done just fine. I'll go ahead and use it here for just a moment to scale that, rotate it from the side, and move it uh, roughly here into place. Now if you notice over here in our sidebar, you'll see that we have the paintbrush icon turned on for these two objects, but not this one. So that means that we need to go ahead and apply that color and material. If you remember, that's MRGB and fill object. After we're done, I'll go ahead and turn that off. I don't really want that on for my move brush. I don't want that adjusting the paint. If you have another brush like a standard brush or maybe a paint brush, you can use that for quickly applying paint and set up a hotkey to quickly swap back and forth between the two. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves and go ahead and append another object. Once again, a sphere 3D, and this is going to be the basic representation for our ear. So we can't see it right now because it's overlaid on top of the other sphere, so let's slide it off to the side. I'll scale this shape down. I'll use the transpose line. I'm just a little more familiar with it. I've been using it quite a long time. And I'll slide this into place on the side of the head. And we want to mirror that over to the other side. I have this hotkey or hotkey menu set up to where I can very easily find that. I'll show you where you can find that in the default menu here, which is in the geometry palette. And you want to scroll down to modify topology. Click and open that up. And then go ahead and select mirror and weld. After you're done, hit X on your keyboard to turn your symmetry back on. I'll close that for now. And we want to adjust the shape of our ear because ears are obviously not round or spherical in nature. So to do that, there are a couple different ways. Uh, one of my favorite ways to go about that is to just snap my view to the top as I've done here. So I'm moving my camera and holding down the shift key to snap. And then I'm going to take my transpose line. And you can only do this with the transpose line. But what we're going to do is click in the middle of our sphere, draw out our line like so, and hold down the shift key. When we do that, it will snap to the vertical axis like this. And as long as the move operator is selected up here, when we click in that middle circle, it will clip the geometry. So this is a really nice, fast way if you're using the transpose line a lot to quickly get in there and clip some shapes to get some interesting effects rather fast. Uh, that is one way of many to go about that process. If you know something that's easier for you or something that you're more familiar with, please feel free to go about using it, however you are more accustomed to. All right, with the move brush, I'll just go ahead and adjust the shape a little more. And I'll go back to my transpose line here from the top and just squish this shape a little bit, again, using move. You can also use your move brush as we've been using here the whole time. We're gonna be using that move brush quite a lot as we continue forward. Let's rotate this shape back a little. The ear isn't sticking perfectly straight out. That always feels a little awkward. So we'll get our shape somewhere about there, maybe a tiny bit lower, something like that. Feels pretty nice. Oh, and of course we do need to apply our color and material there. So I'll click on fill object with MRGB turned on. Now, if for some reason you accidentally lose this color and you can't get the exact same color back, don't worry about it. All you have to do is hover over another object with the color you want and press C on your keyboard. So after you do that, it'll sample the color and then you can click on fill object again. Okay, we still need to append two more basic shapes here, one for the nose and one for the body. We'll go ahead and do the body from here. It's pretty easy for us. If you wanna know a nice little trick for uh, getting your subtools a little more organized, I'll select the neck. And instead of clicking on append, I will click on insert. So now when I insert a sphere 3D, it will put that sphere underneath of the neck as, uh, as opposed to append, which will throw it to the bottom of your subtool list. All right, let's slide that down. I'll go ahead and very quickly apply the color while I'm still thinking about it, since we just did that. And I'll slide it into place, X on our keyboard for symmetry, and I'll use my move brush to just very quickly squash that from the side. And from the front, I'll kind of get this tapered shape that we see over here in our reference. Don't worry about the proportions lining up and being exactly the same. That is not necessary, but if you'd like to spend some extra time working on it, you can of course always you know, align it with the image that I have here and try to get it to be exactly the same. Our goal is not to create the exact same character here, but rather create something new and relatively close while being similar in style. Okay, if you've gotten here, you've done the hard part. 
and that is just focusing on the basic shapes. From here, we're actually going to adjust our forms a little more and start to just get things to be a little more clean and appealing. For instance, the spherical form of our head uh, feels a little too rounded here, and I'll pull out my mask lasso tool to illustrate that better. Uh, a little too rounded here on the front, so we're going to flatten that out and give ourselves a, a couple additional shapes for things like the eyes and uh, uh, some of the flatness for the side of the head, as well as a couple other areas uh, as we work on that here for just a little longer. So let's pull down with the move brush, maybe flatten in from the side a little bit from the front. And I'll just do that here a little longer here. And we don't need to make a ton of changes. It's going to be really, really simple stuff. Now again, alt-clicking on another subtool will allow you to quickly switch to it. If you're unsure which subtool you have selected, maybe you're down here working on the body and it's not moving, well, hit Shift F on your keyboard or click on Polyframe and that'll highlight the current object that you have selected. So in this case, I have this lower jaw piece selected. And I'm just going to use my smooth brush on that as well as this piece up here and try to clean that up, make that a little more proportionally accurate to the style that we have over here in the top left corner. Maybe a tiny bit thinner for the neck, but really, I think that will put us in a really solid uh, place here for us. Okay, before we add on the nose, which will be our final piece, I am going to use my move brush one more time here. And with the move brush, you can, of course, move your geometry however you see fit. But a really cool benefit of this brush is if you hold down the Alt key, you can pull and push your geometry concentric to the surface. Now we don't have to use the move brush for this, but what I'm going to do is hold down the Alt key and push in roughly around here where our eyes will be. And we're not going to uh, add the eyes quite yet. I'm just going to push in and create that basic cavity there. Now you can do this with any other brush. Really, you could use a clay sculpting brush. You could use the standard brush to push in there. It doesn't matter really too much what you use, but uh, just make sure that your geometry, as you could see, mine was kind of poking through in a couple of areas. I'm just making sure that nothing is uh, peeking out there. So that'll be fine for now. Let's grab uh, another piece of geometry for the nose, and we can call this basic shapes portion of our character creation complete. I'll click on Insert, and once again, we'll use our good friend, the Sphere 3D. We've been using him a lot, and uh, we'll probably use him a couple more times before we're finished, but let's get that last basic piece into position. So this is going to be our nose. For our nose, to keep it from appearing too boring and too clown-like, we're going to do a couple different things here. Now, we could use the transpose line to flatten that on top uh, because we've already looked at how to do that with our ears. So that's a really quick way to go about that process if you would like. Instead, I'll show you one other nice method that I enjoy using quite a lot. If you hold down control and click up here for your brushes, you'll see a host of different brushes to choose from. I'm going to recommend the mask lasso, which is not the default. The default is mask pen. So go ahead and select the mask lasso brush. And now all we're going to do is control click and drag our mouse or our pen and create a simple masked selection like so. You can also, I'll press control Z, do it from this side if you'd like, it doesn't matter. Either way works fine, just control tap on your canvas to make sure that the bottom is masked and the top is not. And then all we have to do is with our transpose line or 3D gizmo, either one works just fine, we want to uh, we want to scale that shape down. So you can scale that, push that down, or you can use maybe your move brush, smooth it out. Really doesn't matter. What we're just looking for is something that's more flat on the top and more rounded on the bottom. Now let's make a couple more changes with our shape. I'd like to get some taper, so wider towards the tip of the nose, and I want it to kind of narrow in towards the inner portion. And really, I think we're pretty much done here. I'll maybe, you know, make a couple more adjustments with my move brush. If you'd like, you can use that mask lasso brush once again and control tap on your geometry this time. If you do that, it will blur the mask, whereas control clicking off of it will 
invert the mask. So I'll control click a couple times here to blur it. And then what I'll do is I'll grab my tool to scale in and just scale in really hard on that unmasked section. And of course, clearing your mask is just as easy as control clicking and drag anywhere off of your geometry. Okay, so you'll notice a couple things with my geometry and maybe it's getting some awkward shapes here and there. Uh, maybe it's getting warbly or just getting messy in general. If that's happening to you, I recommend remeshing your geometry. You can do this in the Z Remesher menu here in ZBrush. And what I recommend doing is cranking that number all the way down as low as it'll go. We're talking about basic shapes here, so we wanna keep things as low resolution as possible. So there we go, there's our Z Remesh at a target poly count of 0.1 keeping that nice and low res. I'll fill my color back in. And there is our basic nose shape. Fantastic, I'm really happy with what we have so far, uh, which means that we are good to go ahead and combine all of our different pieces of geometry. So that is going to be the final step for this part of the process. I think we are going to combine everything except for this bottom piece, which is going to be maybe a, a represented as a different color here, as a shirt or something like that. So if you wanna go ahead and fill in a different color for that now, you're welcome to. I'll just use the same color that I had before, this kind of light purplish color. I think that works very nice. And let's go ahead and combine these different pieces. Uh, so before we do that, I will make one change to uh, maybe a couple pieces here, the nose primarily and the neck. Uh, you'll notice that the resolution for the nose is a lot lower than the head. So all I'm going to do is press Control D on my keyboard. That will smooth it out a little, give it some more resolution. Uh, we don't need a ton, we just want it to look a little more smooth. And you'll notice that the neck is a little faceted as well. So Control D on my keyboard as well there. If any other piece is feeling that way to you, just go ahead and give it a quick subdivision level. The, the uh, hockey, as I mentioned, is Control D, but of course that's also available down here in Geometry, Divide. Okay, so let me just smooth out that edge of the ear. You'll notice that it's a really sharp shape right now. I just wanna smooth that out. Uh, we're going for more soft or rounded shapes in general. We want things to feel more uh, friendly and round and sharp edges are going to be the uh, opposite of what we want there. So let's go ahead and combine these pieces now. That's a really easy process for us to do. All we have to do is select our top piece of geometry, go to Merge, and click on Merge Down. And you can click on Always OK if you'd like this pop-up not to come up anymore. I'll do that. I'll click on Merge Down a couple more times. If you do happen to accidentally here, combine with this lower piece, that's absolutely fine. You can easily split that back off. If you try to undo, it's not going to work. Uh, unfortunately, undos are tied, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, they are tied to the individual subtool and not ZBrush as a whole. Uh, I actually prefer that feature. Uh, but let's go ahead and split that back off. So all you have to do is control shift click on your geometry. Uh, and then run a split function. If you'd like to uh, split in a different order, all you have to do is hold Control and Shift, click and drag on your canvas. That will invert your selection. So it's still there. We can invert a couple times just to make sure. Uh, but here we're going to scroll down to Split, which is right here under our subtool menu. And we're just going to click on Split Hidden. So now you can see those are split again. And we have this piece of geometry here. Awesome, let's go ahead and now dynamesh these all together. Uh, just like everything when it comes to art, there are a million different ways to go about the process, but this is the one that we're going to use here. So to do that, we're just going to scroll down until we find dynamesh and click on that at the default resolution. I'll also click on no, it's asking me if I wanna freeze subdivision levels. Now, if you run this operation and your resolution is a lot higher or a lot lower than mine, for instance, that is because Dynamesh is based on the scale of your 3D object in your world uh, or in your scene here. Either way, what we're looking for is something that is not too high resolution, but not quite so faceted that we have something like this. So I've used the default resolution, which is around 128. And um, if you have something about here, that should be plenty good enough. So. We'll just go through and smooth out these areas where things are a little more rough and uh, kind of faceted where the pieces combined. 
and we'll introduce maybe a new brush here in a moment, but for now, up to this point, we've stuck with the smooth brush, so I'll continue to stick with that for just a moment longer as I fill in some of the gaps there. Beautiful. Okay, from here, we want something that's much more clean and easy to work with, uh, and we want the distribution of our geometry to be uh, a little better than what we have right now. Dash is an amazing tool, but as you can see, it's not always giving the best topology. Uh, so that is Shift F on your keyboard to take a look at that if you would like to for any reason. I'll turn off Dynamesh, although it shouldn't matter. Uh, let's go to Ziri Mesher. Let's start set our target poly count to one and click on Ziri Mesh. Oh, and before I do that, I will of course uh, resample my color here, pressing C on the skin tone while we still have it. And that is because after we Ziri Mesh, give that a second to calculate, it unassigns our color and poly paint, as you can see here if I swap my color. So we will need to reapply that. All right, so there is our basic head shape complete. Uh, from here, we're going to move on to a couple different things that involve expression, things like our character's eyes, all the different parts connected with the eyes, and then the mouth and all the parts connected with the mouth. All right, now we're going to take a look at expression. This is where things will start to ramp up in terms of complexity. Up to this point, if you've been following along, we've really only been using one brush, the move brush, and uh, the transpose slash 3D gizmo, if you count that as a brush, but more of a tool than anything. All right, so from here, let's go ahead and start with our eyes, and then we'll start to get the basic shape for our mouth. Things are going to get messy fast, but that's all right. We'll look at some ways to clean up our geometry as we progress. Let's go ahead and start with some subdivision levels to increase our resolution. Right now, things are pretty faceted, so control D on your keyboard just a few times until things get a little smooth. If we need more resolution, we can add that in. All right, so the brush that I would like to introduce from here is going to be a brush that carves into your surface. There are a number of different brushes that you can achieve this kind of effect with. One here that I have is a custom brush. These are all my custom brushes available on my uh, online store at the link below in the description. These are not necessary to follow along. I'll show you some default brushes here uh, that you can use that are very comparable to these. So let's uh, hit B on our keyboard or click up here for your brushes. Either one's just fine. And we're gonna hit D and we're gonna find the damn standard brush or the Damien standard brush. There might be additional versions of this, but as long as you're getting something that kind of carves into your surface like this, you should be absolutely fine. Okay, let's go ahead and just block out or carve into our surface, marking up the section where our eyes will live. So I'm just going to carve in a really basic circular shape on my surface, just like that. And you'll notice maybe it's a little too small. Maybe it's uh, not exactly in the position where you want it. That's fine. Leave it there. We'll adjust it later. All right. Next, let's just carve in a really basic separation for this outer portion of our ear. It's known as the helix, but the anatomical terms don't really matter too much when we're talking about more cartooning characters. Here, we're just looking for a basic shape that gets the point across. And then uh, next, what we're going to do is carve in a really simple shape for our mouth. So let's just carve around and we'll do something like that. And it'll be a little smaller than that. So I'll press undo and that'll do just fine. All right, looks pretty strange right now. Feels very awkward. Absolutely fine, don't worry about it. This will uh, start making sense here uh, in just a moment, but these parts or this part of the process, I should say is very important. I'll make some adjustments while I talk uh, because of the fact that uh, we need to just mark up the location for these pieces. It becomes uh, much easier to do when we can kind of see uh, everything as a whole as opposed to kind of working on one area at a time. So now I'm just using my move brush, as you can see, to make some really minor adjustments to this shape. And now I'm going to do the same thing over here to my ears and mouth. But for that, I'd like to introduce another new brush. I have a custom clay brush that I like to use quite often to build up and uh, knock down form on the surface. Uh, again, you don't need this brush. I'll show you a comparable brush here. We'll hit B, C, and we are going to find 
uh, either the clay buildup or clay tubes brush, whichever you prefer is fine. I'll recommend the clay tubes brush simply because it's a little easier to control and uh, the clay buildup brush can get out of hand rather quickly. So using this brush, as I just showed you, it's very similar to uh, my custom brush. So let's go ahead and undo on those brush strokes. That is control Z on your keyboard. And over here on the ear, all I'm going to do is carve into the surface just a little bit right through here. Use shift to smooth that out. Depending on the uh, thickness of your ear, you might run into an issue where you're using your brush, and I'll just exaggerate this for just a moment, and some of the brush strokes, oh, I'll do it a little more, start to push through to the other side of your geometry. If you are having this issue, you can solve this very quickly by going to your brush menu, and we want to scroll down until we find a menu called auto masking. And then we want to turn on back face masking. This is brush dependent, meaning that it will only apply to the brush that you currently have selected. So let me hit control Z. And now if I do that again, it will not push through to the other side, but the geometry is from one side to the other pushing through, which is another issue uh, that we can uh, solve and better understand uh, which we won't be doing now as it's not relevant to this project, but just to show you real quick, we'll scroll down, display properties, and click on double. Double allows you to see backside facing geometry. For instance, we can see that poking through, but also if we take a look at a cross section of our geometry, we can see the inside portion of it as well. By default, ZBrush keeps this off. It has to render more geometry uh, visibly, so it's better to keep that off for the stability of the software. However, if you have a beefy machine like mine, you typically keep that option on all the time. Either way, let's go back to our ear and a couple of those tools, again, that we were looking at with the clay brush to carve in and work on that section. I'll hold shift to smooth that out. If you would like, uh, with that Damien standard brush, I'll go back to that here. Uh, not only can you carve in to the surface, but if you hold down the Alt key, you can carve out on the top portion. So most brushes have this kind of functionality where by holding Alt, you can get the inverse of the brush stroke. And that's very convenient for us here to allow us to create this kind of basic shape here. All right, uh, now back here to the mouth and eyes. There are a couple different techniques that we can use to push in and create a cavity for these different sections. Uh, the mouth is going to be a lot deeper, and for that section, I'm going to recommend that we use a mask. To do that, we can hold down Control, and we can try to use the mask lasso, but a problem that we'll run into here with the mask lasso is that it will go through to the other side of our geometry. So let me undo on that, and I'm also noticing here that I have accidentally worked on this part of the ear with symmetry turned off, as I was showing an example of a cross section of our geometry earlier, and uh, now one side of our ear is sculpted and the other side is not. Well, that's great for us because I get to show how to solve that really quick, and it's very easy to do. So let's scroll down, and what we're going to do is delete our lower subdivs. We're not going to need them, so it's totally fine for us. And we're going to click on Modify Topology, and we're going to click on Mirror and Weld. Now, by default, this goes from left to right, or positive axis to negative axis. So first, I'll hit Control-Z, and we want to flip that before we do anything. To do that, you can go down to Deformation and click on Mirror. So after clicking on Mirror, scroll back up under Geometry, Modify Topology, and click on Mirror and Weld. Now everything is right in the world once again, and we can continue working on our geometry. So as I was mentioning, we can use the mask lasso, but in this case, we're going to use the default mask brush. So control click up here on your brushes. Let's grab the mask pen and control click and mask off this section of the mouth. And I'll just fill that in. If you hold down control and alt, you can unmask areas. In this case, I'll do that to just barely clean up this lower section. I'll control tap on my canvas that will invert my masked selection. And then from the side, using either the 3D gizmo or transpose line, I will push that geometry in for the mouth. Now, if yours is stretching and getting really messy, that is absolutely fine. We'll be remeshing this later. Don't worry about it for now. 
You can do the same thing for the eyes if you would like. You can either use the uh, mask brush that we just looked at and create a small eye cavity, or you can go back and use the clay tubes brush. And because this isn't going to need to be pushed in quite as far here, you can just go over top of this with the clay brush a couple times like this, and then smooth that area out. Now you don't want to smooth this section out yet because uh, the geometry is so stretched it'll start to round out this form really quickly and that's not what we want. So instead of doing that, we are going to use uh, an operator that we've already used once before and that is called Dynamesh. So Geometry Dynamesh and uh, we'll increase the resolution maybe to around 200. We'll see how that does. We'll start with 200. That looks fine to me, okay. So now we can go back over top of that and gently smooth that area. That is perfectly fine for uh, our uses here. Okay, let's get our eyes and a couple of our other shapes in here. This will be really quick and fun. It might look a little uh, scary at first, but I promise it will come uh, together here in the end. So let's click on Append and grab a Sphere 3D. I told you we'd be seeing this, uh, our good friend the Sphere once again. Uh, and let's grab maybe a slightly off-white color, maybe not perfectly white, little gray. We'll click on Fill Object, and you'll notice we're using the exact same material for everything. So Zebra Paint if you have it, and Skin Shade for if you don't, uh, which is a default material. So in other tutorials, if you've seen my stuff before, I'll mention keeping the pole, this top point, facing forward for our sphere. In this case, it's actually not going to matter for us. All we want to do is make sure that we keep our sphere spherical until we get it into position. I'll mirror that over to the other side. I've shown you where that is. It's down in the Geometry Modified Topology menu, Mirror and Weld. In this case, we got a little bit of a weird issue there, so let me slide out a little to the side, Mirror and Weld. If you're interested how I'm hiding and showing geometry rather quickly, that's because I have a hotkey set up for it that toggles this option called solo mode down here. Very nice little toggle for you for uh, checking on your geometry. All right, let's get this sphere into rough placement here. And you'll notice they're kind of bugging out from the face <laughs> a little too much. So let's uh, flatten this. So from the top view, I'll turn on transparency. And what I'm going to do is just draw out my transpose line roughly at an angle perpendicular to the surface. And all I'm going to do is with move, hold down shift and squash this spherical shape for my eye. Now, a little trick here. Nope, oh, let me rotate that a little and maybe just pull forward on uh, this outside section of the head. Get that aligned a little better. There we go. Uh, a little uh, sneaky trick here with these eyes is that we don't actually care about them being, you know, perfectly round. Really, you can only see the section that's going to be uh, protruding uh, here in the front. So you are absolutely fine to use your move brush and go crazy on these, make any adjustments you would like. I'm going to try to keep them a little more um, concentric here. So what I'm going to do is just use my uh, rotation tool with the transpose line but you are absolutely fine to do that. And the reason for that is because we are just going to paint directly on top of this with a black color or somewhat off black color for our pupil. Pupil iris kind of combo here. And all we're going to do is paint a sphere or a, sorry, a circle right through there. Now you notice the resolution is a little too low. So let's control Z and just add in maybe a subdivision or two or three. You can see I'm going all the way up here to a million polys. That's quite a lot. You don't necessarily need to go that high. The uh, resolution of your poly paint, hence the name poly paint, is based on uh, the resolution of your polygons. So something to kind of keep in mind there. And let's maybe get that a little better in terms of placement right about there. Now, if you take a look at this, it's going to be feeling very awkward because we don't have things like the eyelashes, the eyebrows, all the different shapes here for the mouth. When you begin working on expression, things feel uh, very odd. So try to get past things feeling awkward at this stage and uh, just focus on getting through these different parts, this kind of section that we're adding here. Okay, let's continue forward with uh, a couple more shapes. I'm just adjusting the form around 
my eye. We'll keep that nice and soft. Next, we're going to add an eyebrow. Uh, there are a number of different ways to go about this process, but I'm going to show you something new in terms of tech that we haven't looked at yet. So let's duplicate our geometry for our head. It should look something like this in terms of your subtool list. And what we're going to do is use our mask pen once again. So if you use your mask pen, it should draw out a shape like so. All we're going to do is draw out a basic eyebrow shape, something similar in terms of what we have over there. Don't worry about it being perfect, just something like this should do just fine. Okay, when you're done, uh, let's turn on Shift F or Polyframe over here. Control W on your keyboard, which is a really handy hotkey for converting a mask into a polygroup. If for some reason you don't have that default hotkey, you can scroll on down here to the masking menu and you can click on group masked. Now when you do that, you'll have to of course, control click and drag to clear your mask. Uh, the control W hotkey is maybe a little nicer and faster. It just saves you a click or two. But anyway, all the same here, let's control shift click on this new polygroup. When we do that, it will hide the geometry for everything else. We get to see our nightmare creature once again. Uh, let's scroll down and we'll find our modify topology menu. We'll be using this menu quite a lot as we continue here. And we'll click on delete hidden. So that will just hide our, or sorry, delete our hidden geometry, which is nice because now we just have this piece here. And if uh, for any reason you wanna see the backside of that, uh, I've shown you where that is. That is down here in the display properties menu double, just so we can kind of see that floating piece of geometry from all sides. And we would like to remesh this piece of geometry. Right now, the edges are really jagged. The geometry is kind of all over the place. So to clean this up, there are two steps. We could simply click on our good friend Z Remesher, which we've already looked at. But first, we want to run an edge loop operation. So click here, and then click on group loops with all of the default settings. That will be just fine. And that will make our Z Remesher now. When I click on this at a relatively low resolution, I'll try 0.1. It'll make the geometry much cleaner than if we had not done that. Now, you can see that the edge here is not perfect. I'm getting some weird uh, geometry here and there. Let's try it maybe one more time just to see what it gives us if it cleans it up. It did in this case. If it doesn't for you, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. And, um, you know, the geometry being super clean here is not uh, necessarily our purposes here. We just want something simple and low resolution so that we can use our next tool. So let's go back to edge loop, click on group loops. You'll notice that when you use this operation, not only does it uh, kind of bevel out the edge and create some additional geometry, but it also gives you some edge loops. And that's very handy for us because now we can use masking or selections to adjust this further. Let's look at exactly how we can do that now by using masking. So with either the transpose line or the 3D gizmo, go ahead and control click on this piece of geometry right in the middle. Now, when you do that, it will mask everything except for your currently selected polygroup. And that's really handy for us because all we need to do now is slide this geometry forward. So as you can see, now I've given those eyebrows some thickness and maybe I'll make them just a little thicker. I'll control click and drag to clear my mask and slide that into the sur uh, surface there a little. So I'll go back to my move brush now and we can adjust these further. We can even uh, pick a different color. I'll just grab this brownish color up here. Don't worry, it doesn't need to be exactly the same, just relatively close. Or, you know, uh, if you wanna be um, a little more unique with yours, uh, choose something else, you know. Bright red, blue, blonde, whatever floats your boat here. Shouldn't matter too much. All right, great. There is our basic shape for our eyebrow. Next, we will add the eyelash, which will really help this to start coming together with the expression of the eyes. Uh, for this, we're going to be using another new tool and a new brush. So let's duplicate our eyeball shape first. If you have any subdivision levels on your geometry, make sure you delete them. I'll click on delete lower to uh, achieve that effect. And what we're going to do is use a brush called the Curve Tube Snap. I have this down in my hotkey menu, but this is a default brush. All you have to do is hit B, C, and find the Curve Tube Snap Brush. We are going to make this eyelash black at some point, but let's just 
choose uh, something, you know, like the, the brown here of the eyelid or something that just stands out a little more. It doesn't really matter what you choose, but we just want to be able to see it. When it's black, it's a little tough to see. So from here, I'm going to click and drag this curve around my eyeball, just like that. That looks fantastic. Let's decrease the size of that. The way you do that is go up to your draw size for your brush and just decrease that down a little, maybe about there. Click to update that. And that looks pretty close to what we're looking for. But now we obviously need to introduce the taper of this shape. So it goes from small to big to small. And to achieve that, you can open up your stroke menu. So let's grab stroke. If you'd like, you can click and drag this and dock it on the sidebar. Doesn't really matter. Whatever is easiest for you. Let's find our curve modifiers and click on size. Now, if we go over here and click on our geometry, it will update that. And that's close to what we're looking for, but not quite. So let's click on this curve fall off here. All we're going to do is click and drag up on the middle and click and drag down on this bottom corner. Now, if your uh, curve here gets messed up for any reason, you can always reset it and continue to play with it. But that's the basic shape that we're looking for. So click to update. That looks pretty close to what we're looking for. Let's maybe not go quite so thin on the bottom. Maybe about right there. I'll click to update. And that's starting to look much closer. All right, I'll go a little thinner there. Beautiful. All right, I'm very happy with that. So I'll close that and I'll even undock this. We don't need that menu any longer from here. Uh, and you will see that there is one other thing here in the way. It is this curve. Uh, the way you get rid of that curve, because now if we try to adjust our geometry, we're going to have a lot of issues. We need to delete this curve. So to do that, just click anywhere on your geometry that's not your curve. That will delete it as long as you have a curve brush currently selected. If you are not able to delete it that way for any reason or you're having some issues, you can, of course, also delete it from the stroke menu under, I believe, the curve functions menu here where it says delete. Okay, now if you remember, we did insert this curve on top of our eyeball or our duplicated eyeball. So we need to delete that extra geometry. And if you remember how to do that, that is simply control shift clicking on our curve. So we hide our other eyeball, we hide that piece of geometry. And then we go down to the modify topology menu and once again, click on delete hidden. I use my quick menu here this time. Okay, it's a little easier to see because it's brown. So let's just use our move brush and adjust that shape as we see fit. Once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and fill in that black color. And I'll just adjust mine ever so slightly here with my move brush. And if you'd like to smooth out your geometry, you can of course add subdivision levels to that. I'm going to recommend that you use something called a smooth subdiv modifier, uh, or in ZBrush language, this is called a dynamic subdiv. So you can just click here and click on dynamic, and that'll smooth out your geometry as if it were being subdivided. You'll see that the uh, geometry count is not changing. That is, of course, also the hotkey on your keyboard, D. D and Shift D to to uh, toggle on and off. Okay, I am now simply going to adjust this shape to be a little closer to more of that cutesy style that we have over there on the left. And that's actually pretty close to where I want that. So we'll come back and adjust maybe more later, but for now I'm happy. So let's continue on with more of the expression for this character with the mouth. By now you should be extremely familiar with the process of appending geometry. And that is exactly what we're going to do here. So let's click on append sphere and we'll take our sphere and slide it down into the mouth. And this is going to be the basic shape for our tongue. And I'll just scale this down rather quickly, get it into position, and I'll grab kind of a pinkish color here, and just squash that down into the mouth. All the uh, faceted geometry here is kind of making our mouth look uh, a little more like uh, they have some wrinkles. It's kind of aging the character a little. As I mentioned earlier, try to ignore some of the messiness for now. If it gets uh, too frustrating for you, maybe spend a moment to just clean it up, but 
we'll ignore most of it. It will come together here in just a moment after we get our teeth in, uh, which is the next piece of geometry we are going to add, uh, which is going to be uh, very similar to what we just did, but instead of appending uh, a sphere, we are going to append a cylinder. And for the cylinder, I'll select that, X on the keyboard for symmetry. I'll just fill that in with a white color, as we've done so many times up to now. And I'm just going to scale that in and then scale down. So I'm just getting something a little easier to work with. It kind of fits here inside of the mouth. And then with my move brush, I'm just going to pull down on that, maybe make it a little smaller. And just like that, our expression is very quickly starting to come together. I'll slide this into the mouth a little. I maybe squashed it down a little too much, made it too, uh, too narrow. But I think that's fine. Okay, from here, we want to adjust our geometry to kind of clean it up a little, as I've mentioned up to this point. It's been a little messy and maybe for some of you a little difficult to work with. Uh, we want to do this before we add any paint to our character, uh, which is what we're going to do in our next step. So consider this the final part before we go ahead and move on to that. Okay, to do this, we're going to use a remeshing and reprojection workflow. This is super easy to do and something that um, if you're unfamiliar with will uh, maybe be a little confusing at first, but it will make sense here shortly if you follow along. So all we're going to do is control click up here in our undo history at our current undo history marker. You can see for our geometry of our head, we have all of our undos dating back as far as our simple sphere. So here we are on number 218. You can see that little gray marker now. You can do this anywhere, but we do want this on the most recent position. And then what we're going to do is remesh our geometry. And I'm thinking maybe a target poly count of around three, or in this case, three will be around 3000. So let's click on Z remesh, see what that gives us. And taking a look at those results, they're maybe not the most amazing. There's some stretching in a couple of areas, but to be honest, this is more than good enough for our purposes. So from here, we can go ahead and close Z remesher. And, uh, you know, if you want to grab that skin tone, once again, you can. It's not necessary for our next step uh, because the next step is going to uh, involve projecting our geometry as well as our poly paint or color that we had on our face. So to do this, all you have to do is press Control D on your keyboard or click on subdivide down here. And then the next thing you need to do is go to the projection menu, which you can find here and click on project history. So what we're doing by clicking on this button, and we'll click on always yes for this question, is projecting from our gray marker, or what is called history recall, onto our current piece. So uh, I'll press Control D and click on project maybe one more time. And I'll press Control D to add another subdivision. And we don't need to project again. We have enough information. Uh, so just to kind of illustrate that better here, I will smooth out this shape of the ear that sharper edge that we had there. And if I were to click on project history here, so what's happening here is any form that we have on that history recall area where we projected will project onto this position here. So this is very powerful for a number of reasons. The reason why we've done this here seems like a, a little cyclical, maybe we've gotten back to uh, exactly where we were. But the difference now is that we have cleaner topology to work with. We no longer have that dynameshed geometry, which looked like this. Not only do we have that, but we also have subdivision levels. So we can step up and down through those to work on our geometry at lower levels if we need to. Uh, in this case, we absolutely are uh, going to do that. But first, let's clean up our mouth by just going through with a smooth brush and a little bit of move. Over here on the side, I'm going to add a little volume here to the cheek with my move brush. If you'd like, you can also use your clay brush that we were using earlier and just gently stroke through this area. If you're doing this at a higher subdivision level, be careful because you will get brush strokes. So you'll need to smooth those out. So I recommend kind of doing it at a lower subdivision level very gently as you work on that area. I'll just go through now with my move brush and very gently start to adjust the shape of my character's mouth 
and the shape of this area around the character's eyes. Uh, even with something so simple, you do have to be careful because expression is very powerful. My character in some regards is maybe feeling a little sad because of the uh, kind of distribution of white space from lower to upper area of the eyelid. So what I'm going to do is just pull up on this area and I'm going to try to make the character appear uh, slightly more happy or excited. And I'm going to do that just by kind of rounding out this area and kind of matching some of the proportions that I'm seeing over here a little more closely. And you might have to move and adjust uh, some of the other shapes that we have kind of interacting together here. I'll simply slide the eyebrows down as well, just a little. And these ears are sticking out maybe a little awkwardly uh, in terms of their distance from the head. So I'll control click, grab the mask lasso, and I'm going to grab this area of geometry for the ear. If for any reason you accidentally selected extra, like so, you can hold down control and alt and uh, delete some of that mask. So just as a quick example for you, here's how you would go about that. Control tapping to blur the mask. And then all I'm going to do is slide that in. Fantastic. All right, I'm really happy with that. So uh, from here, you can spend some time playing with your proportions, cleaning things up further if you would like, but I think we're in a good spot to go ahead and move on to adding some paint. All right, from here, we're going to add some paint to our character. We've already done a little bit of uh, adding colors, but now what we're going to do is start to get some more variation in our skin tone and I'll show you how to do that a little more subtly, as well as this color for the inside portion of our mouth. We'll go ahead and start with the mouth because that'll be the easier of the two. And uh, to do that, all we need is a paintbrush. And luckily here inside of ZBrush, any brush can become a paintbrush. So uh, I'll just be using a standard brush. This is a custom standard brush, but I recommend that you just hit B on your keyboard, S, and grab the Good old standard brush. That'll do just fine for you. And I'll go ahead and even use it myself. Make sure that you turn Z add off and MRGB on. So now when you click and drag on your geometry, you should start to get some color as opposed to uh, color and geometry or just geometry. Okay, so let's undo on that, control Z. And let's turn off one more feature with this brush, and that can be found in the stroke menu uh, under lazy mouse. Just go ahead and toggle that off. Okay, for the inside color of the mouth, we're gonna have something a little close to the color of the tongue, maybe slightly darker, maybe a little more towards red. The difference won't matter at all. Just have something that looks close. Uh, and you can come in here and start to paint that manually, which I'm going to start by doing here. Uh, if you would like to, you can also use some masks to make things maybe a little easier for you. If you want to get right up to the edge, that's absolutely fine. So play around with the different tools that we've looked at, at uh, up to this point. I'll just keep things super simple myself and continue to paint through here. And I'll get close up to the edge of the mouth. If you need to, you can now sample the color of the skin tone once again by pressing C and go back over areas to kind of clean it up. But I'm actually pretty happy with that result. And our character is, you know, getting closer to looking a little more cutesy. So let's start to add some variation to the skin tone next, which for that, we're going to grab a more red color. And you can go ahead and choose something that's extremely saturated, uh, maybe around right there where I have my cursor. Uh, and what we're going to do is very gently with our paintbrush, start to add some of this red. Now, by default, we're going to add that very strongly because of our RGB intensity. So what we want to do is slide this number way, way, way down, maybe somewhere around 15 or so. And very gently now, if you have a pressure sensitive pen like me, you can do this very subtly, but if you don't, you might wanna lower this even more. Uh, what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of warmth right here around the cheek, very gently, very subtle effect. I'll add some of this here around the character's eye. I'm again using solo mode to do that. Toggle that on and off. 
And then I'm also going to add some of that here to the nose. And I'll just add some more of that warmth in general here to the face. And then I'll add some of that warmth here to my ear. Kind of giving the illusion of subsurface scattering, if you are familiar uh, with that idea at all. Okay, from here, uh, I'll show you how to knock some of this back because it's pretty easy to get a little, uh, let's say, heavy-handed with some of this paint. Uh, you know, you can get some really, really, you know, rosy cheeks here, maybe. Uh, if you need to, you can sample your skin tone and kind of paint out some of that again. That can be one way you go about that process. Uh, or what you can do is just click on Fill Object when your RGB intensity is a little lower. We've looked at when it's set to 100, it just fills it in entirely. But when it's set to something like 15, it fills in 15% of that color, which helps to knock back some of your other colors, which can be a really nice way to neutralize uh, some overpainting, let's call it. Uh, in this case, I think I'm actually pretty happy with the result that I have. So I'll, uh, I'll leave that where I have it and then maybe grab a little bit of a darker red here that I can just paint right here around this lower portion of the eye, just very gently, and I'll maybe go a little darker. And I'll be a little heavy-handed with that at first, and then using my skin tone, just by sampling it with the C key, I can knock some of that back again. Fantastic, from here you can feel free to play around and experiment with some different colors. If you wanna play around with your eyebrow color and try something a little different, you can do that now because next we're going to add the hair to our character. Next up, we're gonna add the hair, and for that process, it's just as simple and easy as what we did for the eyebrows. It's going to be uh, a very similar process here. So let's press C on our keyboard to sample the color for our eyebrow. And what we're going to do is duplicate the geometry for our head, and let's click on Delete Lower. We don't want our subdivision levels for this. And Control click up here, make sure you have the mask lasso selected. And we're going to mask out the shape of our hair. So from the front, let's just get a quick mask shape, something like that. And then I'll mask around the ear and up to somewhere around there. If you'd like to clean this shape up further, what you can do is go back to your default mask pen and Control click draw out some more of that shape, maybe control alt click. If you wanna carve away some of the masking, totally up to you. I'll just do the tiniest amount of that. Oh, and we wanna be careful here not to get the mask on our ear. It's not what we're looking for. Okay, fantastic. That looks pretty good to me. So same process as before, that is going to be control W to convert a mask into a polygroup. Control shift click to select that geometry. And let's scroll down to modify topology, delete hidden. Now, if you remember the next steps, they involve using the group loops and Z remesher function. So edge loop and group loops, and then Z remesher. And I'll set the target poly count to maybe around one. Now the shape is a little different now than what we had before with our geometry. When we had the eyebrows, they were flat and we could simply move the geometry in a single location or a single direction, sorry. But if we try that now, uh, because this is kind of a rounder object, it's not going to have the exact same results. So what we're going to do here uh, this time is going to be a little different. We can still use the group loops function if you wanna round out the shape a little more. Again, that's here in the loop uh, or edge loop menu. But now we're gonna use a different brush and that is the Z modeler brush. Uh, that is B, Z, and M to find the Z modeler. And this is a very complicated tool, and we're only going to look at one singular function for this brush. Uh, to achieve this result, what we're going to do is hover over a polygon. Uh, be very careful that you're not hovering over an edge or a point. It has to be a polygon. Hold down the space bar and select extrude. Under target, make sure that you select all polygons and then let go of the space bar. Okay, from here, what you're going to do is click on a polygon and now drag up, and that'll create some thickness for your geometry. Now you can see that I'm getting some issues down here at the corners, and that is because of the edge loop function that I used previously. Instead of going back, undoing, and trying to rectify that, instead what I'm going to do is just very quickly and easily correct this with my smooth brush. 
I'm just very gently going up to these spiked points and hitting those a couple times with my smooth brush, very gently. And I'll even spend some time to just use my move brush, slide that geometry back out where it's a little strange. I'm not sure why it freaked out here in this instance, but it did nonetheless. And just clean that up. So if you have the uh, wherewithal to go about this process and clean up your geometry like I've done here, you can feel free to do that if you have the same issue. But if you want to go a little faster, maybe uh, you can just undo and retry it. All right, that looks pretty good to me. So let's find our little character. Uh, the hair is maybe extruded a little too much, but that is a very simple fix for us. Uh, we can just turn on dynamic, which will smooth out our geometry. Uh, in this case, it looks like we might have got some creased edges from our extrusion or just some stronger edge loops, it looks like. That is absolutely fine. What I'm going to do is hold down the shift key and very gently go over top of that edge and smooth out the geometry. I also use the move brush and kind of gently uh, push it into my surface, which will uh, decrease some of that thickness. And I'll just very gently there adjust the shape. Okay, I'm really happy with that. Let's fill in our color and let's add in our second piece for our hair. This will be super simple. Uh, something we've done a number of times, insert and sphere 3D. All the way up until the end, we still have our good friend, the sphere. So let's now just slide our sphere back. We'll scale it down. We'll mirror it over to the other side, making sure that symmetry is turned on and we'll just scale it into place. And with whatever tools you prefer using, just go ahead and adjust the shape slightly to get something similar to what we have going on over here. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, just something like that. All right, so we can call the hair finished at this point, but now we wanna focus on some final details. So this is just going to involve going back over top of all of our pieces of geometry and kind of cleaning them up. Uh, if for instance, from the side view, your face is looking a little scary, we can adjust that as well. So for that, let's start adjusting some of the shapes of our character. Ooh, let me go ahead and fill that color in for the hair. And let's go through and start to make this look a little more cutesy from the side as right now it feels a little too gaunt. And for that, I'm just going to hide some of the pieces of geometry and start to fill in some of this volume. I was adding some of this volume here to the cheek earlier. That's a really fantastic way to add a little bit of that cutesy feel. Same thing here with the mouth. Uh, you'll notice that the mouth is kind of jutting forward pretty far, and that makes it feel a little strange and awkward. So by going back over top of that, pushing some of that out to add some of that thickness and volume, a lot of these rounded shapes really help things feel more friendly. Uh, down here, we'll just kind of pull in on that. All right. And we'll just start to round out a couple of these shapes a little more. And make sure, as you saw there, I had some brush strokes starting to come through. You do go back over top and smooth a lot of that information out. Okay, let's make sure we adjust all of the surrounding pieces. For the eyebrows, I'll go ahead and add in a couple subdivision levels to those and just go over top with my smooth brush and smooth out the information. I'll make some small adjustments here to my character's nose, which is starting to feel a little too Pinocchio, if you ask me. So I'll just push that in a little. And using a mask, slide out the section of my character's mouth. I'd like to exaggerate that cutesy kind of taper that we created for our nose earlier. So I really like that shape. Anytime you can add some taper to an object, it really helps to create some more visual interest. All right. And now uh, that we've made a lot of these changes here to the shape of our mouth, not just from the front, but from the side as well, uh, a lot of the shapes here uh, inside of the mouth, the teeth and tongue primarily, 
uh, need some adjustments. So let's go ahead and grab our teeth. Let's slide those forward somewhere about there. And I'll adjust that shape. Control D on your keyboard to add some subdivs. And you can smooth out your teeth just a little to kind of give it that rounded, softer look. But if you do too much, you know, you don't want to create something that's just completely rounded off. That'll feel a little awkward and strange. All right, let's uh, get rid of this kind of flat panel for the back of the mouth as well. Uh, so for that, I'll just smooth out this intersection. If you'd like, you can use your uh, clay brush that we introduced earlier to kind of fill in a lot of that information and round that out. Try to pull back on that mouth just a hair more, really exaggerating that smile from the side. And the tongue as well needs some adjustments now that we push the mouth for, uh, forward. All right, just making the mouth a little more deep in the middle, kind of like hinting at a throat without necessarily going through and sculpting all of that information. Just a little bit of extra depth there will help quite a lot. All right, up to this point, we actually haven't even turned on perspective for our character, which is absolutely fine. It's not necessary to use that while sculpting at all. Uh, a lot of people have different preferences. I'll keep it off and on while I'm working and kind of toggle back and forth between the two. All right, something else we can do here uh, that might be useful for you is introduce uh, a couple more sharper transitions in a few areas. Uh, for that, I'd like to introduce really quick here at the end, the pinch brush. So B and P on your keyboard, what we're looking for is just the default pinch. And this is a really fantastic brush. I'll show you how it works here very quickly on the top panel or top section of the nose. By drawing out a quick edge, we can kind of pinch off and create a nice sharp transition. I'll uh, exaggerate that even further by using the move brush. Holding down Alt will cause still a pinch, but kind of in a negative uh, direction, which can be useful for a number of different reasons. In this case, I'm using that to transition from the nose up into the top section, as well as just slightly here around the bottom. And you'll notice that I'm not creating super hard edges. I am going back over them with the smooth brush and very gently rounding them out because, you know, this is a kind of a cutesy, round, soft character, and we don't want extremely hard edges that feel um, robotic in nature. So it, it's nice to sometimes start with those kinds of edges, but eventually you will need to kind of go back over top of them as I'm doing here and make everything feel more organic. It's really important to, uh, to keep that in mind when you're working on your, your characters here at the end. Sharp edges can be you know nice for contrast, but overall, we want something soft and round. So keep that in mind as you continue forward. All right, just making a couple adjustments here to the back of the head to make sure we have enough volume back here that makes sense. And for your hair, if you adjust the shape of your head, you might have some issues with things kind of poking through or being a little too thick in a few areas. Go ahead and take some time to kind of clean some of that up. I'll do the same thing here myself. Just pushing and pulling a couple pieces of geometry around. And at this stage, I would say take as much time as you need to really just kind of clean up and refine your character and experiment and get it into a place where you're really happy with the result. But for myself, I'm going to go ahead and call my character finished. For a quick and easy way to create characters like this one, go check out my tool, Mod Mesh. That is a modular, beginner-friendly tool that will help streamline your creativity and your character design process. You can download it at the link below. And if you like this video, I think you'll also really enjoy this one on three tips to easily learn digital sculpting. Click like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.